What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ninja Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Rebel Moon, Brian, we saw it. I saw it on December 24th. Christmas Story was on all day. I can watch that anytime. <laughs> Let me get myself in the Christmas spirit <laughs> and watch Rebel Moon. <laughs> I, I spoke to my sister. She's not a big... I mean, she likes movies and stuff like that, but she likes specific movies. I asked her if she, if she saw Rebel Moon, and she said she liked it. She saw it, and she liked it. Hmm. Okay. But this is coming from a person who's who has said to me that she doesn't like Star Wars. So she never really got into it, never really saw it, whatever. That's an island, by the way. That's going to be an island. The <laughs> Pro Rebel Moon anti Star Wars <laughs> Island. I don't think there's going to be a lot of property there, but that's interesting. That's a take. So I, I pondered on the people. I, Brian, I have to say, when I was watching it, Brian, there were some moments where I was engaged. No doubt. And then <laughs> I found myself in the middle of the Sahara wondering where, how did I end up here? I would say that that for people who aren't into, who perhaps haven't seen Star Wars or, or, or haven't seen an action film in, 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 in years, on, that is not their type of film. This movie to them perhaps is fantastic. But for me, Brian, I found myself in the same state as I was when I was watching Black Adam. I've seen this before. Yeah. And that was my biggest problem. I found myself as a die. I found myself rewriting dialogue, Brian, as I was watching this. How do I make this movie better? Right? Again, it had its moments. And then you lost me. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll pass it on to you with this last um, thing I noticed. You remember one of the warriors that she found that she had the two swords yeah right, the two red swords yep you do you remember the look on their faces when she defeated that that spider that spider thing i mean vaguely yeah okay i remember it because it reminded me of what i felt <laughs> like who cares what's going on here like nobody cared about that moment brian yeah. And that's what I felt about some of the characters, the build up to some of the characters, the way they spoke about them. And there was just nothing but all talk. Brian, your thoughts? Yeah, I think you hit on it. So I think if we're talking story, and Zack Snyder has said this is a story that he first conceived of in college, that this is something that he's kicked around with his co writing partner for decades, literally. But I think you've hit on it, which is we've seen a version of this story done many times, not just once, right? It isn't just Star Wars. It's been done many times. And so if you're going to, if you don't have a truly original idea, what I felt with this story was like, I could feel the attempts to disguise what I had seen before. Does that make sense? Like I, I know what you're doing. But yeah. you're trying to put a lot of extra words and a lot of extra backstory and a lot of exposition, a lot of bells and whistles around what is a very basic good versus evil, rebels versus empire story, and try to make me think I haven't seen it before. I could feel yeah. that effort because there, to me, the structure that I was it, I was surprised honestly that that Zach did it because it's not been something he's done a ton of, which is. There is a lot of speeches in this movie, like a lot of monologues where a character basically starts telling a story. You get a flashback, like an entire full sequence of explanation of history. And it just, the pacing is just wrong. When that happens, nowhere. you can't recover. Like the story, whenever it gets the momentum, it's like he drops one of these in there and you're just like, okay, 
all right, I got to wait. Like, can I go to the bathroom? And then, you know, it just has that feeling of like, this thing does, it doesn't, it's like herky jerky. It does, even Justice League, when he fleshed it out, to me at least had more of a rhythm than, mm. than this did. And so I just, I this. couldn't get, I couldn't, you said there's parts that engage it. I think that's right. I couldn't stay into it. I could get into it at points, but he was taking me out of it actively and I couldn't get back into it. What do you, do you want to discuss, um, what in particular, do you want to discuss uh, a name, some of the movies that the movie reminded you of? <laughs> I can name a few right now. Let me, let me, let me yeah, do three. Yeah. Okay. And then you do three. Okay. Inglorious Bastards. Okay. Um, Matrix. Okay. Definitely some Superman, Man of Steel. That's three. And, and I'll say Inglorious Bastards with the with the hitting with the bat and all that other stuff. Um, um, Matrix like towards the end when he's in the all those things. Yep. And he was he's going back into that that shell or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And the Man of Steel was those two ships arriving. Y yes, the Kryptonian ships or the mother the mother world ships yeah. look awfully a lot like Zod's. Yeah, yeah, Wait. it looked like the exact same sequence. Yep. Um, I thought in terms of story and character, I mean, I mean, in Star Wars, we don't have to say there's so many direct like lightsabers, the rebels versus empire, um, magnificent seven, like this, like the way this, she this went and recruited, when the way she went and recruited and then the archetypes he chose was straight out of that seven samurai, which he said, like it was from Kurosawa. So, I mean, I, I could see that there were a couple of shots that were lifted straight out of Lord of the Rings too. Um, there's actually, if you watch the end of the two towers, it's exactly the same as the end of this movie. We're like, it's like the, the remaining heroes are riding in a field with the sun behind them, looking out at kind of the world that they're about to kind of battle for. It's exactly, it's like a note for note, shot for shot recreation. Um, so I, I definitely was, was recalled that, um, uh, I was trying to think, I mean, I think. There's other, you know, the ship, there were a couple of ships that actually reminded me of the Alien franchise, like the way Cameron used to build, like some of the transport ships, like the way he designed them, like the bigger ones. Um, so there was that. Definitely Avatar. Avatar, for sure. Yeah. I mean, definitely like, uh, yeah, his attempt to use some of the creatures and like some of the, the motifs. Yeah. Like, uh, do you I, yeah. want to talk about that sequence? with uh the 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 prince who's a now a slave gladiator oh type. yeah there was a there was oh that was it sorry the, the gladiator conan the barbarian was the other sort of the, the village what did you think of that process. Process. I, I didn't hate all the performances i gotta be honest like i, I he gets people with talent to, to show up and work I, Brian, I didn't hate all the performances Brian, this to me let's get this out the way to me none of this has to do with the performances or oh, the performers really the performance this is how this is this is all zach so i don't blame i like some of the i like some of the characters but yeah, they like, went nowhere that's yeah, pretty like, much I mean, like, story-wise it ruined the whole thing yeah and then the other thing too i mean S sophia butella the lead cora who's a very good physical actress we've seen that in star trek we've seen that in kingsman um, but I mean, the character looks like, um, Alita battle angel. I mean, it's the same character that Cameron invented, you know, 10 years ago, even down on the haircut and the style. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I thought her performance, I mean, you got, you know, Digimon Hansu, Charlie Hunnam, you even got Anthony but, Hopkins playing C-3PO. Like, I mean, it's, I can't believe he got that. I was like, <laughs> Brian, Diamond Hansu. Yeah. General Titus. Tell me, tell me he didn't, tell me you didn't see Hulk Hogan when he said, when she said revenge, he didn't like. I was like, uh-oh, he's getting his <laughs> Hulk Hogan rage. He's just start shaking his fist. <laughs> Brian, it it was, Brian, if I would have been in the theaters, I would have been laughing at that. Yo, I was laughing at home when I saw that. It, it meant nothing. So that, you know, there are several, you know, to Zach's credit, as always, there's some visually very striking scenes. Like, oh, yes. some, like some of the way he plays the gunplay and the slow-mo. He's as he's almost as good as anybody working at, at making some of those look cool and choosing angles and that sort of stuff. But to your point, 
there are moments in this film where you are supposed to feel drama. You're supposed to feel weight. You are supposed to feel emotion. And, and the actor is it. trying. You, it's, the actor is working their darndest to sell it to you. But as we talk about so often with these types of stories, if you don't earn it with what you've done before, we don't care in the moment. You know, to me, the one that I was, this was one of my chuckle moments. Um, by the way, uh, shouts to Ray Fisher, who apparently has been using his downtime in the gym, man. That dude looked fit. Um, he looked like Bishop. I was like, whoa. I, I didn't recognize him at first because no, I was I'm looking for like, him. And I was like, Wait, what? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so... But his his sort of triumphant sacrifice. You just it's like you killed not, him. You killed him. We're not invested enough in his character to feel. But I want to see where it went. So it's like that sequence looked cool, but he hadn't been given enough to do for me to be like, oh no, he's that. not going to give it for. So what I saw when I did that was that was Ray Fisher. Going after the D Warner Brothers studio. That was it. <laughs> he played out his moment of charging up headquarters <laughs> and stabbing Walter Hamada through the chest. Zach probably like, like, make believe. That's, that's what that's I was like, right there. That's what I was. I was like, they had to have a conversation that this scene is your like, scene to go like, to. You're to, living to, vicariously to. through. <laughs> like, this is it. Charlie Hunter, man, I enjoyed his character. Yeah. He was entertaining. Yeah. Again, we can't blame the the performances of the, of the individual actors were fine. Is what they were saying, what they were bad. asked to do, what yeah, they were, what they were asked, asked to do. Yeah, and that's and like, all, Zach. The backstory is too complicated. This is the this is the too many ideas, Zach. Right? He's because he's riffing on so many different movies. Like he'd have been better off ripping off one, honestly. Because it would have cut down some of these, like these long speeches that didn't need, didn't add anything to our enjoyment, even if they added in his mind to sort of the encyclopedia of this movie. Let me ask you this: If I told you, Brian, there's four or five movies in there that could have been made, and he put it all together in one, would you agree with that? Yeah, because that's what he does. Right? How is that any different than him putting Dark Knight Returns in the middle in the middle of Dawn of Justice? It's the same thing. This is what he. We talk about the lack of editing. We talk about too many ideas. This guy, in some ways, like he's. I, I don't know if too smart. Too. He's too imaginative for his own good sometimes because he is. He is a cinephile, but he's not able to give you a truly original idea. So he takes twenty seven ideas that he's already seen and liked, and he mashes them together. What were your thoughts of Chris Nolan's comments about Zack Snyder? So, look, I, I'm as big of a Chris Nolan fan as you're going to find. But I think this is one of those, like, I don't know what the equivalent is. is it, this is one of those, like, black marks in my mind, on, or like what ifs in, in our genre that he, Nolan doesn't get any flack for. And I actually think he owes us some answers for, which is why Zack Snyder got Man of Steel in the first place. Because the world would be a lot different place if he chooses Matthew Vaughn, uh, who went on to do Kingsman, who did X-Men First Class. If he chooses Matthew Vaughn instead of Zack Snyder in 20, 2012, I think a lot of things in this world look different. But Nolan, for some reason, really has an affinity for the way Zack tells stories. And I don't get it. I, I don't see what those two guys have in common. I think if, if I had to reach for what I think Chris Nolan likes about Zack Snyder, it's that in his mind, Zack takes risk in filmmaking. I think Nolan is a guy, if you look at the way he tells his stories and what he uses camera and cinema for, he does give you, he always believes in giving you something different. Yeah. Now he's much more of an artist and much better at it than Zack is. But I think that's maybe what he resonates with is that like <laughs> Zack in his take on Superman, he would view it as a noble attempt to make Superman more morally conflicted and less of an all-American hero. For Nolan, that would be more interesting than what Richard Donner did. I think that's probably what he sees in like Watchmen in particular as being like ahead of its time. Um, but as usual, we find ourselves in this debate with Zach of like, we see some of the things you want to do. We like some of the things you tried to do, but it, the, the end result 
is bogged down by its own excess. And, it, and, and like, that's just all on you in this case. Like it's a hundred percent on you. And so I, I just, you know, I'm, I'm still disappointed. And I'll, and in our conflict of Zack Snyder, I'm still going to show up and watch part two, which is all Netflix cares about because people showed up to watch this movie. Oh yeah. So maybe Zack had the last laugh. Yeah. And that's, hey, if people enjoyed, I mean, the hype was there, the buildup was there, the fact that it was for free. Because yeah. if this, go ahead, you take say over. Say it, say it. I think this is, I thought about this after the fact, and I was like, this is why Zack Snyder at Netflix actually makes more sense than Zack Snyder in studio space. Go ahead, say it. You go, you take this movie to the theaters. This movie dies in two, three weeks. This, it this bombs. Movie, it's a bomb, this, 100%. What does Netflix only care is that subscription day, that reoccurring <laughs> payment. <laughs> That's yeah. it, and more of it. Yeah. So they got and 24 the, million. The right? fan base that Zack Snyder brings with him. Yeah. So they got 24 million viewers, like out of the gate. It was one of the most seen thing. It was the most seen thing on Netflix. It was one of the most seen things they had put out in the past couple years. But you're right. If you had to plunk down $20 a ticket, to go see this, they're not getting that audience. It's the audience that's already paying their monthly Netflix subscription that's like, oh, what's yeah, that in my it. queue? I'll watch it, cool. It's, yeah. it's something new, Zack Snyder, I know that guy. That's a brand name filmmaker. And so then in that sense, Zack and Netflix actually can work together better than what we've seen. And maybe we underestimated the pull of that because at that kind of viewership, look, people are gonna be, you know, Netflix is going to be excited for part two. And Zach's talking about spinoffs already. And if they're getting 24 million people watching it opening night, they're going to give him money for spinoffs, whether we like it or not. Are you going to watch the four hour cut? Because that's the other way Netflix and Zach win, right? It's like if they've got you because you need to now see their claims of the R rated version of this being a different movie. My thing with that, though, is like four hours at the way this thing was paced is going to feel like 12. And, and, and is it only me and my bugging? Were you, were, is, did you find yourself having to check how long, much further you got along this movie? Yes. No, I did. I did the same thing. And I, I you know, I paused it. Like I went to the restroom. I, I, I kind of like couldn't make it all the way through. Um, and you're right. Like, that's what I mean. Like the opening, you know, the opening on sort of the farming moon of Velt. You can kind of see like, all right, I know what we're setting up here. I know what we're getting toward. But then it's like we're going off in all these other directions, which to your point are and Zach has admitted this. Some of this is seed planting for things he wants and hopes to do in the Rebel Moon universe. That's why it's there. But it takes you out of the narrative to where weirdly, you know, the one thing that kind of threw me a little bit for a loop was you, when you talked about checking the time. I was like, OK, so I know this is a two part movie. What exactly is he going to use as his set piece to end part one? And it kind of threw me a little bit for a loop, I have to admit, because I thought the defense of Velt was going to be in, in this movie. And I was like, that's going to set the stage for the broader revolution that he's talking about, um, that the blood axes are leading against the mother world. It didn't occur to me that the defense of Velt is actually going to be the end of part two, not part one. So when they had the climactic battle, I'm like, Really? That's all. That's as far as we're getting in this yeah. movie. And then sort of we end, you know, we're kind of back at Veld at the end and, it, and the final battle hasn't even started. I'm like, uh, it, yeah, it just that whole sequencing felt like off to me. But he not she not she must have knocked out like eight, nine teeth. <laughs> and then when you see him again, he got he's still messed up. He still got all his fronts. Yeah. You, see, you see those little details. I, you know how I am. Yeah, but it, it's the Probably, same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Freddie, I have Freddie laughing, and sorry, sorry to uh, uh, go elsewhere. But in the in the spirit of Zack Snyder, um, Godzilla, he um, Freddie was laughing that the, the reason why I took that that point five away instead of giving it a five out of five, I gave it a four point five out of uh, out of five. Because walk, underwater walking. That don't make sense to me, Brian. It just doesn't make sense. You trying to drown him and he's walking in the in the ocean? It just doesn't make sense. But I let you, I let it slide. But with this, Brian, this movie, there was too many things that I just didn't care about, Brian. Yeah. And now yeah. you're asking me to watch a four-hour director's cut to see more of what to see, something that's different, that's a totally different movie. That's whatever the hell you said it was. 
because I yeah. still don't get it. Yeah, see, I feel like if you're going to do that, then since you're on Netflix, just make it a, make it a series. That's what you're doing anyway. That's what the movie could have been. Word, yo. Maybe you would have made it a series? Then the pacing makes more sense because then in one episode, you're going to go focus on this backstory. In this episode, you're going to focus on that character. It works a little bit better. When you're trying to make it like a flowing cinematic piece, it doesn't work that way. Zack Snyder seems like a difficult person to sway. I think, he's uncom- I think he's set. uncompromising is what I would yes. say. Uncompromising. Yes. But like he's a, but like, you know, in, in in sports terms, like he's a classic, like a lot of tools, not much toolbox player. Like he's a guy who like you would see why he get drafted high. You know, you would see like, oh, he uncorked a 65-yard spiral strike for a touchdown, but then threw four picks the next week. Like that's that's Zach. Like it's just you get the whole you get the whole spectrum. And we just haven't seen the consistency out and the you know the tightness out of him and, and his product in a long time. Brian, you and I spoke that they, it would be difficult for Zack Snyder to get another two hundred million dollars or whatever he asks for to do a film for his ambitious <clears throat> films from another studio. <clears throat> but there's one movie I would give him, Brian. One movie that requires his visual. Prowess. Okay. Um, and I think you would agree with me. He Man. Zach Schneider's He Man works. Works. Because you're not going to get goofy. Fair. And you're I, not going to get else. goofy. And you don't go to, he, to a. Come on, man. It's He Man. You're going to. You're not going for a great story either. You know what I'm saying? You're going to visually see Eternia, him fighting Skeletor, all these characters, and you're going to see a mess. But I, it's Brian, I'd give him. I, you know, I'm right. I would Netflix give has, him. He-Man. Netflix has He Man too. I mean, it's funny you say that. Netflix ha- has the rights. That he, they've been the ones working on He Man. I mean, well, I also say this: if you're if you're a male actor working for Zack Snyder, he does not tolerate body fat. Oh, that I mean, dude, yo. <laughs> Did you see the people in this movie? I'm like, who is this? This is like a this is like a, a poor man's predator. Like you guys, are, you guys are up at 3 a.m. at the gym, all of you, like going at it. Because that dude didn't look real often. Sometimes, yo, he like his body. It didn't look real, yo. <laughs> and his story, man. When they got to his story, I was interested in all this, and then it just evaporated. Yeah, I agree. That but that was funny. a story for all the characters. Pretty much, right? Out of five, Brian. Um, I'm going to give it one and a half. Uh, I think there's enough. There's enough here, just visually, and there's some in, the, in the, just the I don't know the the talent of the actors that I think gets you. You know, it's not a total waste of your time. Um, but I can't. I can't go to. I can't even get to average. Just the way how it's clunky and sort of disjointed as the story and the pacing goes. So I'm, I'm going one and a half on this one. I'm going to go with two, Brian. You could talk me into that. You could talk me into yeah, that. Yeah, there were some aspects or certain parts of the film that had me engaged and, and had me interested. The way at the end of the film, or towards the end, when they were questioning people whom they've captured, captured and the way they immobilized them was very clever brian i was like oh snap that's crazy so i give him a two for for thinking of something like that but and again and the two for having there being certain instances where i was like i'm in and i see where it could have gone there was some good there was Zack Snyder's over, but the the slow mo, the excess of slow mo was just I, I just I'm tired of it already. Yeah, it's the same with the lighting and the lightning. Like he just he just yeah, he, it, it, there's always too much of that. That's why your He Man thing. I was like, oh, he would he would do the I have the power sequence. That would look pretty good, probably. That's like right up his right up his I'm alley. Telling you, Zack Snyder doing He Man. Zack Snyder's He Man. I am there. Put that in the theaters. You put that's that's a franchise right there. That's a franchise. You're talking about starting from the bottom. He man hasn't. Ha- what, what's the bottom for He man? You can't get any worse. 
Just go watch Dolph Lundgren. You can, ain't made it to the theaters. You just don't repeat. Let this be our final battle. Just don't repeat <laughs> no. that. Cause your man, the other guy, Frank Langella. did it twice. Yeah. In, in in the cartoons, which was like, really, yo, is this like, am I watching a repeat? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, but yeah, man. Rebel Moon had his moments, but it's just the, it's just. It's just, and then and then you're asking me to watch another four hours of what again? Well, four hours know. of this, two plus hours of part two, and then four hour version of part two. I mean, it's a, it's an investment. <laughs> Let's see if the numbers, if it translates into the numbers that Netflix expects to see with this. If it does, hooray! But I'm just not a customer. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of this. This is a long one, but it deserved um, some uh, discussion because of all the stuff that's in it, Brian. Um, let us know in the comment section below if you got which part of the movie did you guys enjoy? Did you like the movie? Tell me why you liked the movie. Would Don't you just tell me I was you rewatch parts of it? Would you rewatch it or rewatch parts of it? Are there things you would go? I'm curious if people who saw it would be like, "Hey, I'm going to pull I think it so. up." There's some Netflix parts that are rewatchable, Brian. Mm -hmm. But that's like 10, 15 minutes. You put this into shorts, forget about it. Rebel Moon, Rebel Moon, 15 minute shorts, forget about it. <laughs> 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 we'll go back to what was it, Quibi or whatever that got canceled. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> It would have, it would have gone crazy on, on Quibi. Anyway, let us know in the comments below what you guys thought, and uh, we'll see you next time on the Nigerian Report. The show goes on. Yeah!